Hello again, this is John, and I have in front of me here a, a Model 42 Singer desk that I recently picked up. And uh, apparently there were two different styles of these. This one is the older style from the 40s. It has three drawers down the right side. And the newer one in the 50s had a, a door on the right that was curved just like these drawers are, but it had a door in front so it would close and hide the two drawers that were in the, the later cabinet. So this is a 40's vintage uh, according to what I've read online. And let me just oh boy, pull that open. This is a, an inkwell that Singer put into these things. Apparently they wanted you to use this as a writing desk and so you had an inkwell to put your fountain pen ink in and a little tray on the side to put your uh, fountain pens in. And I've got a 1591 sewing machine inside this cabinet right now and I've got a manual for that. It's missing the front cover but got a manual for that. On the right side is the three drawers. Bobbin holders here. And the foot control for the sewing machine. The little bracket back in the back is for an, a Singer oil can. Someday I'd like to pick one of those up, but I don't have any of those at the moment. So I'll go ahead and pull out the motor control and stick it down on the ground. And let me set the camera up for a minute. Okay, here we have a Singer Model 1591 sewing machine. It's a straight stitch only machine, forward and reverse. And it has a built-in gear drive motor in the back. That's this little piece sticking out the back end here. And it's got a worm drive that drives the, the hand wheel. Not much to these. It has uh, the forward and reverse lever on the front. And uh, the thread tension is on the left end here. This particular one is a Centennial Edition. It's got a little Normally it's just a, a gold Singer medallion here, but this one says a century of sewing service, 1851 to 1951, the Singer Manufacturing Company. So obviously this machine was made sometime around 1951. Now we can flip it open and look at the bottom here. This uh, the only thing of interest on the bottom is this little knob. You can loosen that and it will allow you to sew without the feed dogs moving the fabric along. So if you want to do darning or something you loosen that up. But we're not going to do any darning so we'll tighten it back up again. It has a class 15 bobbin carrier over here and it's uh, not much really to see. I'll, oh, I guess it's not plugged in. Okay, now that we have it plugged in, I'll run it for a little bit here. It's an oscillating hook, meaning that there's oscillating and rotating hooks. This was an oscillating hook. You can see this piece here it just goes back and forth. A rotary hook just spins one direction all the time. And so this is oscillating back and forth.
So let me get the camera set up and we'll do a few stitches. Uh, I was running that with a presser foot down. I shouldn't do that. So let me show you how to thread a Model 15 Singer. Try to get the light in the right spot here. There's a little hook on the back. Might not be able to see it, but there's a hook there. You hook the thread over that, then it goes on the far side of the tension discs up through the check spring here, and then there's a hook that it has the hook behind. See how that works? Now the check spring pulls that down in that fashion. And it goes through the hole here and the take up lever down through a loop, down through another loop down here, and then down through the needle. And it goes from right to left this direction. Then we give it one full revolution and we should be able to pull up our other thread from the lower bobbin. There we go. And uh, we'll set a kind of an intermediate stitch length. full stitch length. Go very slow and we can go reverse and we start pulling it up towards the upper half of this quadrant. Back forward again. Long, short, and back up. Forward. So this is a what 60 year old sewing machine and it still sews just as well as it did when it was brand new. Since this is a straight stitch only machine they made these automatic zigzaggers as an attachment that you could put on these to do zigzags. Kind of an interesting little gizmo. Once it's hooked up, it gets hooked up back here in the back and this arm hooks over the, the needle post here. And so then the needle arm moves that up and down and ratchets this wheel around. And when that wheel goes around, it moves this foot side to side. And that's how you get a zigzag out of a straight stitch machine. This particular uh, insert has is a uh, goes from narrow to wide and back narrow again. It also came with a standard zigzag cam. Yeah, this one looks like a scallop cam. And then side to side. Zigzags, little zigzags on one side, then the other, then the first side, then the second side. So 
So we'll try doing just a straight zigzag. So we pop that in there. And then we'll mount it up to the machine. To mount it, it uh, takes the place of the, the standard presser foot. So I unscrewed the foot off of the machine, took the thumb screw out all the way. And then this just fits in there. And gets screwed on. And I made sure that the little fingers got around the the screw for the needle. So when the needle goes up and down, now that arm goes up and down and ratchets the wheel around. So they tell you to start with the arrow on this red cam pointing away from a little mark over here. Not quite sure why they do it that way, but that's the way they do it. So we'll see how this goes. I'll just, I'm just going to go through one layer of material here. Give a little more stitch length. Not the most elegant way to make a zigzag pattern, but if this is all you have, or what all people had in the old days, you could do a zigzag stitch. And this is <coughs> this has an adjustment over on the side here. Uh, it's on the widest setting right now, which isn't really all that wide, but it's on the widest setting, and you loosen the thumb screw over here and slide this gizmo forward to make a, a narrower zigzag or wider. Wider goes back, narrower is forwards. So we'll just do a little more here. Put a little more tension on it. So that is how you do a zigzag on a Singer 1591 with the automatic zigzagger attachment. A little clumsy, but it works. He's also had buttonhole attachments that you could buy for them, which basically is the same kind of thing. This piece would mount just like the zigzag thing is and it takes cams in it to do buttonholes. There we go. And this particular one came with four different types of straight buttonholes and then the one keyhole type buttonhole attachment. So all the newer machines, like in the 60s, they, you could buy them that would do all these kinds of different stitches without having the little gizmo hanging off the back. But 
I think it's kind of fun having these old attachments to play with. So I don't know that there's much more I can say about this sewing machine. So thank you for watching.